215. We're still hanging out at Pizza Brain. This is a museum, as you can see around, mm -hmm. but yep. it's also, of course, first and foremost, <laughs> a restaurant. And we have the Forbes. Okay. The Gale, which looks very interesting. I know okay. you have your eye on that. I do. And then you've got your classic Jane. In fact, all the pizzas have a name. Yes. Uh, now, this one, the pattern is balsamic vinegar. Ooh. Yeah. Again, like I said, it's a form of art. Yeah, yeah that looks okay. good. One of my favorite forms of art is neon. And when I lived in New York, in my apartment, I had some neon art, and it would go, eh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, surely you've been to the Neon Museum, <laughs> oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been collecting signs since about 1978. And then by 1983, I just went into this full time. So I had a neon business, but I was always collecting signs and always wanting to have a place to show the signs because I started realizing that they were more than just, you know, beautiful pieces of art. They were symbolic of history, particularly Philadelphia history and 20th century American history. The idea of taking a rare noble gas and putting it uh, and having it electrified and glowing, that concept was around for a couple hundred years. Like here's a very elaborate sign over here, the, uh, the Howard Johnson's Lamplighter sign. By like the 1980s, it started fading away. It was very, very big in the 50s, you know, all kinds of roadside stuff, which we focus on here uh, at the museum. But that's how the museum came about. We, um, I, I've been collecting the signs, and then I've gotten more and more into the history that the signs represent. This is a picture of what it looked like at Six and South. So that has the most emotional attachment. It has to be over $100,000 to create something like this today. The reason Philly was so important for Neon is that, if you think about it, we're, we're a row house city, and before big box stores and before Amazon, we had shopping streets. Every couple of blocks, there was a shopping street in Philadelphia. It was just the industry that was really big and important in Philadelphia. Back in the 50s, if you flew over Philadelphia, you could see the sign from, from airplanes. <laughs> it, it was an incredible piece. What we're trying to do is get people to learn about what the city was like at that point, what America was like at that point. The culture has changed. You know, pe people are not um, going to local shopping streets. They they're ordering their packages on Amazon. You don't have the same level of social interaction. We thought that the interest would come from people around our age for whom this would be nostalgia. But we get 20 and 30 year olds, they love it for Instagram photos. Most of the people come in here are between maybe 25 and 35, and they've never heard of Horn and Hard Arts. They've never heard of Howard Johnson's. Things that, you know, any other Philadelphian would have, who's 50 or older, it would be common to them. So it's important to us, not just for them to ooh and ah about the signs, but to learn about some of that history. Out on the streetscape, you see one of these signs at night, and it's just a, a beautiful kind of Tom Waits, middle of the night, you know, eerie sort of feeling. So here you could see, you know, a hundred of them in one place, it's, which amplifies that feeling. And you can check out the Neon Museum for yourself right there on American Street.